Well, good evening and welcome to the Go Tapes Goulburn Valley Football Show. Big show for you this evening. We've got a couple of young guns here from the Shepherd and Swans. We're going to touch on what happened in the, uh, on the weekend at Interleague Football. But before I go any further, like a welcome to our panel. Guy Morford, how are you, Guy? David, really well. JR, how are you? I'm very good, uh, Guy. What did uh, you think of the weekend? Yeah, a bit disappointing with the Interleague, but uh, I suppose when you go into a game and had the injuries and the pullouts that uh, we had during the game, you know, it makes it pretty difficult, but full credit to Geelong. Uh, they were good on the day, you know, they kicked uh, 30-odd points. A few of those were rushed, but uh, look, it was a good game of footy. But uh, the GV just got to back up and go again next year against Ballarat. Yeah, one thing we might touch on later, and I probably may or may not speak about this later, I just think there are a few boys when when they really have to step up and perform an interleague level, I just don't know whether there's to some players there, we won't obviously know names, that probably when the going got tough really needed to stand up. And like you say, full, full credit to, to the Geelong League, but... Yeah, I, I just there was a couple of disappointing performances there for me. There's players that can't go; they can play home yep. and home, but yep. can't go to the next. Correct. Week. Well, there's plenty more coming your way. Yeah, I'm going to show you the magic of television in a moment, because shortly, straight after you hear a word from our umpiring fraternity, I'll be talking about that a little bit later on. When we return, it'll be Mario Di Santarena with two young men from the Shepherd and Swans. Love Aussie Rules footy? Are you retired as a former player? Do you go to secondary school? Then here's a career for you. The Goulburn Valley Football Umpires Association invites you to join their team. Umpiring positions for young men and women or adults with a good level of fitness to become boundary, goal or central umpires. Get paid for doing something you love. Call the GV Umpires Association today. Thanks, Foxy. And uh, joining me tonight here is uh, two boys from uh, Shep Swans. Aaron Egan, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, Mario. And Jerry Perona, how are you, buddy? Yeah, not too bad, Coach. How are you? Yeah. Great, thanks for joining us tonight. It's the first time we're doing this with the Thirds program on, on the show and uh, I'm sure all the boys out there in the Thirds are, are waiting to hear uh, what you guys have got to say about what's happening in the season. So just starting with you, Aaron, um, you came in from Shep East this year. Yeah. And you had a pretty good year last year. Yeah. Yeah, dummy yeah. modest. Tell, tell the people out there what you did. I uh, kicked 125 and we won the flag. Yeah, and where's your coach playing you this year? Centre half forward. Centre half forward, there you go. <laughs> 125 goals, you don't get in the goal score anymore. Boys. <laughs> and Jerry, what about yourself? Yeah, um, come over from Wanganui, won a flag out there, and then the school size got abolished, so out to uh, Swans I went, and yeah, third year at Swans, so. Enjoying it? Yeah, liking it. Great stuff. So, what, what, what's your plans for the future, Aaron? You, you had a crack at Bushies this year, and I think you got through to the final stage. Yeah, got I, got, cut there. I got dropped in the end. Um, yeah. Hoping to get a senior game this year, if yeah. I'm lucky, and just happy to get whatever comes my way. Beautiful. What about you there, Jerry? Yeah, well, I'm uh, just in it for the fun of it, really, this year. Enjoying my footy a lot, so it's yeah. good to play with mates every weekend. So Yeah, and you both be busy with the studies, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. 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 And the no ladies. Worries. All right, some questions without notice here, boys. And the ladies. No wonder you're playing like a dog, I tell you, Jerry. <laughs> Get off there, mate. All right, some questions without, um, without notice, boys. So, biggest nuisance in your squad at the moment? Quick. Um... Servo. Jack. Servo. That's a good knock. Yeah, probably Jared Servo. Jared Servo gets an odd biggest news <laughs> at the club. Well done, Servo. All right. Who's your favourite for the flag? You haven't played all the sides yet, but you've been watching the results. Yeah. Jerry? Um, I'd probably say Benalla or Achuka. Achuka was strong around the ground. Yep. I'd probably say Benalla. That yep. sort of gave us a bit of a touch-up when did. we played there. Yep. Well done. Hardest opponent you've played at, if you've got one? Um, or the best player you've seen out there this year? There's a bloke, the full forward from Machuca, I thought he was a very good footballer. Yep, big 25. Yep. Yep, big unit. On us. Yeah, I thought um, Daniel Wood from United, his arms have just gotten so big over the uh, pre-season, hard to tackle. So. On your Woodsy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you could pick one bloke to join your club, who would it be? Trent. Trent Greening, probably. Trent Greening? Yep. From, um, from Marupna. Marupna. It's a big rap on the kids playing seniors, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably Trent. He's a great bloke. Got Trent Greening fan yeah, club. Well yeah, done. All right. Club. Now, Jerry, won't be a surprise to me, people. What's your nickname? Uh, Snoz. Snoz. Just turn sideways to the camera and show them why. There you That's go. Look at that. Is. What a ripper. <laughs> All right. Nickname? Uh, probably Boozer or, Boozer or Eggs. Boozer or Eggs. There you go. All right. We'll move into it now, boys. That was pretty interesting. They get to know you a bit more there. Uh, you know, the season, we had the bye last week. We're back into it this week. Um, interesting to note, Tatura got their first win in yeah, two years. Yeah, Yeah, it's good. Pretty yeah. good effort for the boys yeah. out there, and they've been struggling a bit. And, uh, it's always good to see them get a win there. Uh, the goal kickers at the moment are and Zane O'Donnell from Kyabram. He's leading on 26. Trent Greening, the boys you, you fan mentioned club. there, fan <laughs> club there. He's from Arupna, he's on 20. 
Cody Crawford from Benalla on 15, it's a fair effort. Uh, ben McDonald from Cleabram on 14, and Jaden Clark from the Swannies on 13. Bit of a surprise for you this week, Clarkie. You won't be playing forward, you won't be playing midfield, mate. Oh. So, <laughs> that leaves back line or bench. Oh. The latter. Uh, Ichuka's on top uh, with 24 points there, clear on top, and then follows Benalla and Urara on 20 each. United on 18. Kyabram Bombers on 16 in 5th, Mansfield in 6th spot on 16, and then she starts to get a bit of a log jam with Shepparton on six, on 8 in 7th spot, Seymour, Seymour in 8th on 6 points, Marupna in ninth on 4, followed by Swans, Rochester and Tatura all on 4, so she's pretty close here. This week's games, boys, a quick tip, Shepparton versus Seymour. Uh, Seymour. Seymour. I'll go for Shepparton. Yeah. Kai Abram versus Manfield. I uh, hope Kai get up. Will get up. Kai. Kai, yeah, I think Kai will get up too. Ural versus Tachura. Yeah, Ural should Ural. get up. Yeah, Ural should get up there as well. Marupna versus Ichuka. Chuka. Yep. I reckon Ichu- uh, Marupna will take it to him, but then Ichuka will run over in the end. No? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Mar- Marupna, but uh, JR told me never to tip you, so Ichuka will win that one. Swans versus Rochi. Get Swans. this one right, boys. Yeah, Swannies. Swannies, yep. And Benalla versus United. That's a Sunday game, I think. So I reckon Benalla. Be- Benalla? Yep. Yeah, and Benalla. Benalla should get up, yeah. Well, there you go. You've heard it from these two blokes. Don't know whether they can play. Haven't seen it yet this year, but they might know a bit about football, so the tips might be right. <laughs> so thanks a lot for your interest tonight, and back to Foxy and the crew. WorkSafe 2015 Country Championships, Goulburn Valley Football League versus Geelong Football League. Well, thanks, Mario, and those two young fellas. As you can see, they are the stars of the future. You just would have seen and witnessed our little, little interleague promo. So what we're going to do... Guy and John is we'll start off and, and we'll get your thoughts on what transpired. You were both actively involved in the game. Guy, f- first off, what did you think? Oh, yeah, look, I mean, it was it was obviously one-sided, the event for the day, and, I, and I, luckily Geelong didn't kick straight too because it could have been a lot more. But, yeah, look, I mean, we don't obviously don't want to harp on it too much, but I just think, you know, what we just said a minute ago, Johnny, about there's just some players who... And, and it's and it's not just interleague level. It, it comes when in finals as well. There's some players who can step up and some who can't. And it's, yeah. a, it's a simple fact. It's yeah. Some people hand, handle pressure situations like that a lot better than other, and... and um, Oh, look, I think they'll they'll take a lot out of it, but I, I think uh, next time they'll be probably having a look at selection and that'll be a factor, I would have thought. Yeah, look, I think, yeah, selection-wise, you know, when there was, like, 14, 13 or 14 guys that were available that probably would have been in that side, it would have made a massive Ma- difference, yeah, a big difference to the side. But in saying that, like, they did kick six goals, five in the second quarter. Mm. So, to me, and then I think if they had to kick those two goals they had in the third quarter, the first two shots, you know, they could have put a lot more pressure on them. But I think you're right, where that where we fell down was some of the guys that we thought uh, probably might have been better players than what they were, but they just couldn't go to the next level. But I thought one bloke that did stand out was Sam Martin. I thought mm-hmm. he was uh, absolutely outstanding. Him and uh, Hugh Robertson and uh, Andrew Reardon, gee, I thought those uh, three blokes were absolutely outstanding. Will Martin, Owen and Quade Johnson, I thought were very good for the GV boys too, Foxy. Right, well, Tony, I've got a question that I want to ask both of you, and then you can have your view on it, and then I'll ask you your view on it. And that is, I... I I think games are being decided and thrust forward by sides are being uh, held back through the rotation of players through the centres. Yeah, look, I reckon with the rotations, and I know Travis, for a start, is not big on on rotations, but I, I think a lot of times coaches will, or more, it's probably more qualified to answer this now because he does sit on the bench but I think a lot of times the players uh, bring themselves off when they need they think they have, they need a, a spell and I think that you know I think one, one a quarter is probably any amount but a, a lot of times you'll find that sometimes that you've got probably some of your best players sitting on the bench all at the one time which I don't think works and it can bring you undone and a lot of times when a bloke really just gets going and he's starting to dominate and you take him off it takes him a while to get back into it again and I think there's a problem but in saying that, if a player is buggered and he wants to come off, well, then I think I have no problems with that. But Guy, your theories on it? Yeah, look, I, I disagree with the statement. I don't, I don't think uh, rotations are probably losing games of footy, but I do think, uh, and I have said this on the show before, I do think we try and emulate the AFL a little oh, yeah. bit too much in what we do. Um, and... Uh, you know, I think at that level, probably high rotations do work because you're dealing with very, very good footballers. Probably at club level, um, not so much. I still think what what loses modern day football now is, is the amount of points that are scored. Right. We are just, you know, it's a, and this is not just GVFL, AFL level too. 
it's embarrassing some of the scores of points, you know, and 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 Where I'm not, having the shots wrong. Absolutely, but I'm yeah. not, you know, great effort for Geelong to win, but nine goals, thirty-two or whatever it was. 30, yeah. That that to me is just unacceptable at the level, the standard of footy we are playing. But yeah, look, I, I mean, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. People in the GV know an elite midfielder will know when he needs a break. Yep. Yeah. If he needs to have a break probably two or three minutes on the bench, if not push yourself forward. That's that's the point I like to see more. Is like at, even at Maroubna where McDonald, he doesn't sort of come off, he does now and again, but he, a lot of times he'll push himself forward and that, that's when they become very dangerous. Well, I won't walk away from the fact, and I'll tell you right now, on Saturday we're playing two and a quarter minutes into a game of football and I played in the ruck a bit. Two and a quarter minutes and you've got to run to the interchange bench? Not on. Yeah, no. Oh, not settle, yeah, no, no, just, not just, just a minute. Yeah. Kick a goal. And run to the interchange bench after kicking up? Not on. And I'm telling you right now, Martin, Quade Johnston, and uh, the boy from uh, Mansfield. Gray. Uh, Nick, Nicky Gray. On one given instance there, we're really featuring. And Nick Warnock got his head right, got his game going, kicked a couple of goals. Next minute, they're sitting right in front of me. I cannot work that out for the life of me. Yeah, Leave them out there, for goodness yeah. sake. I just think at probably in the league level, uh, a GVL level, I'd say no. In the league level, I worry about because the tempo goes up a fair bit more and it's a fair bit quicker. But, uh, oh, yeah, I know where you're coming from. Like, I see some games there, you know, there was five minutes into a game and the six minutes, uh, they had six interchange. Well, that, to me, that's not mm. Mm. I, I do agree, just touching on that. If, if I'm a big believer and if someone's up and about, you leave them on there, oh, but, yeah. but, but where, where where that comes into it, it your bench in football can be re- really the, the the people on the bench need to have the trust in them to when they need to know when when to make that call. Cool. So somebody's up and about, you trust your bench and the people on the bench collaboratively to say, yep, yeah, he's up and about, let's leave this player on, yeah. don't make that rotation. On the flip side, if he's a little bit down, absolutely. Off. You take good players off when they're buggered. You don't oh, yeah. take them off when they're firing up. Well, I believe they're pushing them forward anyway. Yeah, well, well there you go. Yeah. The defence rests in that area yeah. as well. But anyway, one thing's for sure, Geelong, you were fantastic. Mm. There's no doubt about that. They won. Uh, we had one purple patch in the second quarter where we looked like we were a bit of a chance. And, they're, they're, you know, you can highlight errors and this, that and the other. But yeah. the game is over. The better side won on the day. Mm. Yep. And uh, all good to Geelong. But I will say this, very disappointing from where I sat, John, that there was no under-18 game. Oh, that's all I'm saying. No, that was disgusting. Mm. Absolutely disgusting. But enough's been said about that as well. It's been in the paper, the whole deal. Let's get into some Cheerios. Johnny? Yeah, uh, I've got uh, Mick Shanahan, a mate of yours, Foxy. Yeah, Big Mickey, down uh, there. Down yep. at uh, Wood End. Yeah. He said, you look like a beanbag. He Is said, that, no. Did he say a beanbag? He said, I look like I swallowed a beanbag. I look like you swallowed. And yeah. I'll tell you what, Mick, you're spot on. He's not I think he was having a bit of a shot at me Vitabrits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he might have been. <laughs> but he did, he did say how much he enjoyed the show. So good on you, Stretch. Well done, son. I've got to tell you uh, good news. A, a player that, uh, an umpire rather, that we've got boys that are breaking onto the league soon, you really get thrilled with it. But I've got a shot here of young Jack Spencer. Now, Jack is a bloke that we've talked about. He umpired the yep. Murray League Grand Final last year. He umpired his first game when he was 13 years of age. He was born and raised in Avenal. And the first thing you game he did at 13 was Avenal versus, I can't remember who the other side was, but a big, big effort at 13 years of age. Because I'm telling you now, mate, he wouldn't have been much bigger than that microphone oh, in those exactly. days. And uh, he did a great job. He's, he's a very good umpire. Yeah, he is, he is a great umpire. Well, he's umpiring the curtain raiser on the MCG to the Indigenous game between, I think it's between the Bombers and Richmond. So yeah. what a thrill it'll be for oh, Jack. Congratulations, also, Jack. It uh, puts him out there. And, yeah. and to all the people of Chris McCullum and, and all those blokes, we're generally excited for the, the progress oh, of this yeah. boy. And, and I know the bloke that um, um, has had a big influence on him was the last coach of... Uh, Coached the grand final with him, coached a million grand finals, and do you know what? He's. <laughs> Pato. No, he's not Pato. Pato, Pato would never get a grand final. <laughs> yeah. No, but oh, big Meeky. Oh, yeah, yeah. Darren Meeky. Yeah, big Darren. Darren yeah. was the last uh, playing coach of the Avenal Football Club, and I know Darren's had a huge influence on, on his own. So to Darren, Chris, and, and all the blokes who are in Dumpiron, 
uh, up in this region. Congratulations. And I oh, know we've had a few go down there, but I'm, I'm really wrapped for Jack because he's a pilot and he's a quality young fellow. The other thing I've got to say today to our old mate Fergie, John. Ferg? No, he's yeah. a wonderful bug, Ferg. Fergie's a volunteer and he's, uh, I've got a photo of him here, you'll see. And uh, Fergie was there, always comes up and says good day. Terrific, special young man and uh, has been a... Birthday last week. Yeah, exactly right. And yeah. It was great for Fergie and, and he was... He was uh, good to see him and say good day. So good on you, Ferg, and keep up the good work, mate. And see the photo there. I, I'm trying to work out who's the youngest, but I think Ferg's got you. Yeah, Ferg, he's, <laughs> Ferg he's a lot younger than me. Yeah. But I got it was your birthday last Saturday, too. Yes, it was. Right? Yes, thanks, John. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. Some other people's yeah. birthday. Yeah. Like 71. John Newcomb. <laughs> it was John Newcomb's birthday. Yeah, yes, I know. Yeah, it was uh, quite a few of them out there. <laughs> Sorry, John. Uh, but last Saturday in, at interleague level, one of our great friends and and you know we and I mean this sincerely young Jake Paul Pratt yep. sustained a a, um, a serious knee injury but talking to Jake have a look at the nurses that come and got him here the the Indian nurses they did a terrific job with Jake got him up running about and and uh, it's not that often he get, gets a kick but we happen to have our cameras here the day when he got his first kick and you can see Jake here do you celebrate right in the moment when he kicked it yeah, do, you, do you reckon it was his first kick or just the nurses well either that, <laughs> I, I think if you have a look at this well I think it's a combination of both but the big thing for me was when Willie Martinello yelled out over the boundary line, get over here, you hot thing, and have a look at oh, Jake well. and Willie. Come yeah. on, well. Oh. One in five, doing, Johnny. Eight? One in five. Eight. And Alec could be full of them. Yeah. But, but it, you, seriously, Jake. Yeah, go, right. Johnny, you go. Yeah, seriously, Jake. Uh, we do wish you all the best. You had a good game in the league uh, footy. And, look, uh, we hate to see anyone, you know, mm. even at the uh, match level, you know, get a knee injury. You're a terrific young fella. Uh, you're a credit to your family. And we do wish you all the best. He is a we, good young fella. We hopefully, you know, might you, you know, it's only a bit of a tear or something, you might be back in uh, five or six weeks. Right. Well, let's get into the footy. And um, we're going to do the mailbag first. Up, oh, right? yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Sorry. Hang on just a minute. And we've got to do the mailbag. Sorry. And Morph's mailbag. And it is, I thought we would have heard a, bit, a little bit more in relation to the top 50. 50, but everyone's gone. No. That's all you heard after John Ryan's side came out. One bloke in particular. I have not oh. had any criticism. Have we? Not? Well, I'll tell you. I'd beg, I'd beg the differ. What about the Ivory Prince? <laughs> the he, Ivory was, Prince. he was oh, not happy yeah. with you. Yep, you're gonna Lukey. have a go on my birthday, Lukey. If you start working hard, you'll get back in sunshine. Oh goodness uh, me, he was, he's a good he bloke. Would, he wouldn't have a drink with you, so I'm not talking to you. I wouldn't have a drink I'm with you either. To you, oh, damn, good on you, Luke. I would have just given him that to you later. <laughs> he <Anyway>. did. <laughs> he did. Oh, right, righto, boys. On, yeah, on, yeah. on to the mailbag. A couple right. of cheerios from me too. Just, just a very quick one. I'm, I, every week, I say to my young boys, Oscar and Harry. Love you to bits, champions. Well, uh, me, which one give me a bit of a touch up on Harry? Harry, Harry. 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 Am I talking all right tonight, Harry? He's he's a cheesy he's little devil, that bloke. He was good. I hope no you've been good. good. I hope you've been good to mum and home. On the anyway. money, Harry. He's no good. Good <laughs> nice. on you, boys. Yep. Right, hi, guy. On behalf of Riding for Disabled, I would firstly like to thank the GV Footy Show for their support and recognition of our organisation. We greatly appreciate the time and effort put in to create an awareness of RDA and what it does for our community. I would then like to acknowledge and thank those who have donated towards RDA in response to the footy show. I've handed out to our committee two donations passed on to me from JR. $50 cash donation from Bernie, which I think is Bernie and Tonowitz, is that yes, right? Yeah. And a $200 check from Harper and Morford. All of these donations are very, very much appreciated, so can you please make sure that our sincere thanks is passed on to those concerned? Uh, and personally, uh, to, the, to the people involved, uh, take this as our thank you. Oh, look, obviously, I'll, I'll just say to that, it, it's uh, what Rosalie does out there is obviously, I haven't seen it, Johnny, but it's obviously for a very good cause, and, and uh, I, what I can say on behalf of Harper and Morford is absolutely love giving and helping out people who, who are a little bit um, more disadvantaged than somebody else. Oh, look, what those people do out, do out there is absolutely marvellous, and look, uh, you know, through the year, if any of you people want to come up and donate to Foxy more from yourself, just come and give us a donation. We will give it to them. You know, they've got to, they've got to get hay. And we've also, through the week, uh, Foxy had another man donate two moving, bales. Moving pitches. Moving pitches. He uh, donated two round bales. You're a very, very good man, uh, Bernie, uh, to do that. And, you know, those two big round bales, they're probably worth 70 or 80 bucks each. Uh, but he's donated that for the horses. But if there's anyone out there who'd like to donate, just give it. It comes up. Us at the football, give it to Foxy, give it to Morphe, give it to me, and we will pass it on to the uh, riding for the disabled. Mm. It's a wonderful cause. Yeah, RDA, just, just to sorry to, to uh, uh, motor through that, riding for the disabled association. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, good cause. 
Get behind it. Next letter, g'day, Pella, g'day, Fossil. Someone's getting a little bit up and about here with the letters. I don't don't think I'm as old as you, JR, but anyway. (laughs) G'day, Fossil. I was in, and it's come from an anonymous source. If I find out who wrote this, look out. I was interested to watch a segment where Martin Gleeson came in to explain the point system and salary cap proposal. I would also be interested to hear what you guys make of the proposal and if you agree slash disagree. I can probably comment on that and I'll comment very quickly. The point system, I probably don't have my head around so much at the moment and you you blokes might be a bit more on top of that. What I will say from being involved at club level for many years, and this is only my opinion, the salary cap proposal, I just don't see, unless someone can correct me if I'm wrong, how that can how they can police that in country footy. Okay. Now, I'm going to use an example. We're obviously a sponsor of the Royal Football Club, right? We're, we're builders. Let's say we've got a plumber and electrician within the club and uh, we want to recruit John Ryan to our football club for $800 a game. On top of that, just to get him across the line, we'll, on behalf of our business, we'll say, Johnny, we'll, we'll do an extension to your house. Correct. Tell me how anyone is going to be able to police something like that for a salary cap. And I just think with player payments nowadays, most player payments are done on a cash basis, right? And I'm not saying anything that nobody knows here. I just don't see how... It's different at league level because you've got a full book of accountants and you've got everything is documented. I just don't see how they are going to be effectively able to control a salary cap. No, look, I agree with you 100%. Uh, I can remember years ago, a couple of times in the times I've been involved in, you know, they'll buy TVs, lounge room suites and all this sort of stuff. Now, if they're going to police it, obviously they're going to have to hire a couple of blokes to do it. Well, who's going to pay for them? Mm. The clubs? So all of a sudden, you know, you just lose money here now. If it's, I can't see it working. The point system, uh, I don't agree with the point system uh, for the reason being, I think the point system is bought, eh, bought in to level sides out, Foxy. Well, if you have a look at the GVL, seven sides out of the last, seven different sides out of the last 10 years have won premierships. So mm-hmm. we're not one-sided. If you look back in 2012, which is, what, three years ago, Tatura won it. Now, Tatura might win a game this year, but they're premiers in 2012. So to me, the GVL does not need levelling out. I think the GVL is perfect, and I think the point system and the uh, salary cap is not needed in GVL football. No way, shape or form. Yeah, I think um, when people talk, you know, I've got to be very careful from where I sit, but I, I will say this, that in this region, um, there's only been two clubs go under in this region. I know a few have joined up, yeah. joined forces, but we've lost two clubs, a great club just up the road in Wanyu, and I know a lot of people were broken hearted there, and I also know that the Invergordon club would have been one that went by the by John a long time ago, in fi- was, within 50 years. Yeah, but that so. was in hard times so, too. Yeah, Foxy, yeah but I understand that, yeah. but I'm saying, so our track record's not too bad, but I think in other areas, something has to be addressed. Now, what the answers are, I don't think can be I, sorted I out. I think if you look at, say, the O&M, if we just touch on that, just say for a minute, well, right, the last seven or eight years, all right, it's been Albury and Yarra. Mm. Well, to me, then, that's out of hand. Mm. Whereas, as I've just said here, we've had seven different sides in 10 years. So mm. I, I what, think what, we were laughing. Yeah, one thing we've got to be careful about, though, we, we, we probably get a bit biased because we talk about the Golden Valley being the GV footy show. I think the AFL are trying to implement this as a statewide, statewide. thing, so not yeah. just a GVFL. Yeah, yeah. And I think there will be other leagues who probably can see the point system having merit because you yeah. speak about Ovens and Murray who have been a bit one-sided. I, I think the point system has some very good points about it and I yeah. think it has merit I, I, I think it we were probably, only speaking in our league yeah yeah, yeah. And, but I think it probably needs a little bit more time for them to go through probably the pros and cons and really uh, sort out the nitty gritties because we I mean we spoke about as an example what how how does a VFL player get ranked when he's coming and going from a club well, through the it. year and uh, probably the other thing I'll just show you there boy I don't know how the salary cap works but your salary cap would have to go even all over the board because you couldn't have a hundred thousand here Say 150 in the Murray League and 200,000 in the yeah, RM, they'd yeah. all just start moving. So mm. anyway, I'm sure I'm sure it's something. It, look, it's a good letter. At whoever that anonymous person was, and I, I will find you for calling me fossil. But it is, look, it is a good letter, and, and I think that uh, it will take care of itself in in the due course. Morse Mailbag at gmail.com. Send me anything in you like. Yep, well done, guy. And let's get into it now because we are up to 
talking about the up and coming round. There's some great games this weekend. Guy, we're going to start off with you. Vanilla play United on Sunday. It's a 1FM broadcast game. Guy. They absolutely do, David. And this is also, too, the work safe match of the round up at Vanilla on Sunday. And as David alluded to, 1FM will be broadcasting the game. Yeah, look, it's, it actually probably will be a good game of footy, this Vanilla. Uh, obviously, last, uh, last game before the uh, interleague, lost to Rochi by 34 points. Um, you know, Jake Polpratt, obviously disappointing there. He, he will not play this week with his knee. We spoke about that. Uh, that's another loss for, for Benalla to fill. Joshy Martin, look, boys, he was sensational. For one player, I thought, in the Interleague, who was really good, Joshy Martin, left footer. He can play the game. Josh Mellington, four goals last game. Um, pretty good up around Ford. Will Martinello, we know how good a player he is. He'd. Mitch Exton popped up again for three goals. I think he's a young bloke, this fella, isn't yeah. he? He's up there, so he's obviously... Got nine for the year. Yeah, he's obviously going well. And, and Nick Warner. I think was pretty impressive last last week and I think you know Nick's obviously has the ability and I watched him last week when he gets his confidence and gets up and about he's a very good player so I just think he needs to get a bit more consistency now yeah. in his field in his game Morgan played last week but from all reports I've got is his hamstrings no good boys so I think Lukey will be uh, wanting to get that right probably before it gets too much to the end of the season going over to United last game well you know a 60 point loss to Kai I just, I just don't know where United are at the moment, boys, and we can discuss this in a minute. But, you know, players like Butler, trying hard, Matty DiBella, Sean Hoy, you know, I've heard your name a lot, mate, over the years, but, I, you know, I just think at the moment probably needs to lift because he is a very good player. You know, Matty Randina, uh, Campbell up forwards, come across. Timmy Luby, you know, everyone speaks about Timmy Luby, and he's a, he's a sensational player. I would love to see Timmy Luby go back in this side. I think they've been using him for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I know I know I know for a fact he's playing injured at the moment. Oh yeah. And, and, and he, he mightn't play. Yeah, he may not, but I just think for the United for the United boys out there, get behind your coach, step up and, and give him a bit of a chop out because I just think your side is too reliant on Timmy Luby at the moment. I personally think he's United are much better when he's playing back. But also they don't have the goal power playing up forward. So yeah, look, United at the moment 18 scoring shots to Kai's 23. So they can match it yep. in their scoring shots, but obviously, again, that's where that, that points comes into it again. Um, you know, I, I think, too, Benalla at the moment, boys, are a little a little bit unsettled at the moment. I mean, they've still got players to come in. To me, they just feel a little bit unsettled at this time of the year. I'm not writing them off, yep. but I'm just saying they look a little bit unsettled. It's going to be a good game of footy, but I just still think Benalla will be too good. Yeah, look, uh, Benalla have only won one out of their last four. Uh, Foxy and uh, United have only won one out of their last five. But you know, I think you'll find this week Jacko, Wolf and uh, Brook Martin mm, will, biggins. will come back into yep. their side. They've only had 14 goal kickers for the year, uh, Benal this year, which is a bit unusual for them. Oh, look, I, to me, United, I've had United in the top six. I reckon they've underachieved a little bit. Yeah. I, think, I still think they're a better side than what they're playing, and I think they will show that in the second half of the year. But uh, at the moment, they're just not playing well, well enough. Do, do, do you well, agree with finals, John? The way they're playing at the moment, no. Do, okay. do you no. agree with what I said about Luby, or what, what are your I, thoughts I, on that? Oh, look, Luby... He's a sensational player. You know, he's kicked 17 goals for the year, and he's in a, he's in a situation now. He's, he's sort of putting himself everywhere to try and win him the game. Like he'll go back if they. And this is one good thing about him. He puts himself back if he has to. He puts himself forward if he has to, or put himself in the midfield. But what you're saying is right about him. But he's just trying to do too much. Yeah. But he's just a sensational player. But John, you know as well as what I do. You can't just keep putting out spot fires everywhere. Yeah. You've, you've got to get some consistency. I just think I United think are better with him on the oh, when setting up the drive. For but the they need they need a few more boys there to stand up. Well, they've got to get in on boys because yep. we've got, still got a few to go. JR? Yeah, look... Uh, who's going to win that one? Uh, I'm going Vanilla, boys. Yeah, Vanilla. Yeah, uh, look, uh, Vanilla. The big game, fourth, uh, Swanies four and two against Rochester, six love. They're just going on beautiful, uh, Roger. Swanies, their two games they've lost was seven points to Maroon and 52 points to Benalla. <clears throat> it's going to be an absolutely uh, fantastic game of football, this. I'm definitely going to go and have a look at this game. Caden Antonovich, uh, your number one love child. Uh, uh, oh, no, my love number, child's come back. Al Jacker. Al Jacker, yeah, he's number two. Yeah, and number three was Marky Quarrel, but Mark, where's Marky? 
But digging anyway, holes, digging holes. Yeah, look, uh, Caden Antonovic, uh, I, look, he's a very, very good player. Nathan Marone, I reckon, will line up on him. And Nathan Marone has just been some unbelievable running off the half back line, which uh, the uh, Swannies are going to have to be careful of Marone, and especially Nick Knight, who's running off the half back flank absolutely uh, magnificent. Justin Madden, James Gledder will go to him. He's had a go at him every time that they've played. And if that's not working, then, of course, uh, the coach, he'll have a crack at him. But I reckon uh, Gledder will get first go at him. But in the midfield, you know, Quaid. Johnson, Tommy Priest, what a year he's having. Tyson Sidebottom, this is when he starts to come good, when I leave him out of the top 50. BJ Squires is going. Mitch Bell will come back in. If you get Mitch Bell, Alex Overs, and Michael Tinker back into the side, Fox, it's going to make a, make a big difference to him. With the uh, Rochester Tiger, what can you say? There's six love. Uh, you know, Daniel Anderson's been really good. Ash Watson, what a year he's having. He's been terrific. Daniel, Dylan Williams has been also very, very good for him. Uh, Jake Perry's kicked eight goals from boys across the half forward line. He's been terrific. Strew Ben, uh, they might even try him one out in the square. Strew Ben, I think Josh Chapman might get the first crack at him. You know, Cutress, Aiken, um, Dylan Cutress, as I said before, with nine goals. They've had 17 goal kickers for the year, Rochi, which is uh, a bit up on what they were last year. Because if you look at last year when they finished week, kicked 103, Cutress 39, the next was uh, Sanders uh, was the next. So... Look, uh, they've had, as I said, 17 goal kickers. The Swannies have had 13 goal kickers. But uh, I reckon on the Swannies' ground, Foxy, I reckon the Swans can get them. Mm. They're a hard side to beat at home. I reckon the Swans match up beautifully. If we had enough time tonight, I'd go mm. through a lot of the matchups. But I reckon, I reckon the Swans at home can uh, get Rochester because I just think they match up on them very well. Thank Christ we don't have the time, Fox. Well, I'll yeah. fall asleep. I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now. The Swans and Rochester is going to be a cracker. Oh, yeah. mm. Both these sides represent what is real pace in the competition, and I, like you, John, am going for the Swans at home. Yeah, I just I can't go past Rochester at the moment, boys. I just think they spread too well. And uh, yeah, Swans, I They're agree. And hard. I agree they are. They are, and I agree Swans are hard at home. But I just think Rochie got too much firepower. Oh look, the, Sw the Rochie, I don't know why I'm doing it, but Rochie really impressed me the last week when I had a, oh, two weeks ago when I had a look at them. They're fit. They're hard. And they're playing for one another. Mm. All right, let's have a look at the other game. A lot of people think this will be a walkover. Let me tell you, it will not be. Mansfield aren't that far off the mark. They are travelling to Coburn. Coburn have been solid all year. Their form's not too bad at all. They've got some great players. Tommy Sheldon's uh, got himself going now, John. That spells danger yep. for all opposition sides. Jason Morgan, and I've been said about him. Joshy Vick is starting to play the football that he played about three or four years ago at fullback now, Vick. He's very hard to play on. I'm a huge rap for Brad Edwards. I would hate to play on him. Jordan Williams is a class sack. Nick Colstock saw him the other week. A very, very good game. Uh, Justin Sherman's filling that role where... You're just in the right spot at the right time, the link play, if you like. I'm really a rep for the way that Axel Childs goes about his footy. He's hard, tough, and super aggressive, and I like that. And any player, you've got the danger man up forward and burst and can kick goals. Lukey Morris, probably the best either end player in the competition at this stage. I think young Luke can't make up his mind where he's going to be a gun centre half forward or a gun centre half back. Me, personally, I'd leave him at centre half forward. Xavier Hilton's a good player, and the evergreen Chrissy Atkins. Well... Mansfield will have their hands full when they come up against them. Burberry has kicked 11 for the year. Ben Fagan's kicked 9. I think Ben, does he come back from suspension this week? Bashevsky's mm -hmm. off a um, off an Italy game. I didn't think he was too bad on the weekend. David Ayres, uh, Jacob Howes, Nick Gray, if he's not at Collingwood, he'd be more than handy to him. Big Mark Jones, a solid as in the ruck. The Hines, well, they're A-OK -okay too. And then you've got boys like Avalis and Blackburn and, and Poston. And I can tell you right now, I think they'll be gallant Mansfield, but I think Kai got too many guns and I think they'll win this one. Yeah, look, uh, the Kai boys, they've only lost the one that was five points to Rodgy and uh, the Mansfield average loss uh, is 56 points, so, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, and at home, I, I'm going Kai. Five and one, you have to go Kai. Again. Billy Burston boys kicked another seven in his last game, didn't he? Yep. He's, he's, three he's, went he's, he's had bags of eight and seven. Yep. Who, who will match up on him? Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. I, I don't see Mansfield having, unless unless they actually, and, and this bloke is possible to do it, to swing down the other end, Ben Fagan could yeah. be a good matchup. Yeah, but I think they're going to try and get the ball out of this match. Well, they've got to be attacking. Kai. Anyway, that'll be an interesting matchup. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. Who's going to win? Uh, yeah, Kai. Right, I might tell us all about Marupna and Ashuka. Yeah, Marupna boys obviously lost to Yarrow by four points in the last game. In what, what was a very good game of footy. Um, 
Yeah, McDonald, as I said last week, absolute superstar. Six goals from the midfield and resting up forward. This bloke is just an out and out gun. I, I would rate him probably, John, the in, you know the best in the top 50. If, if uh, Will didn't win the medal last year, but yeah. out and out superstar. Russell was good from Rubner the other week. Uh, Atkinson, another good player. Trent Freer, you know, played a lot of under 18s footy against this bloke. Went to United. He's a tough nut. He's a good player as well and playing some really good footy for Marutner at the moment. Yeah, Lewis was good. His ankle is no good at the moment and it's no secret about that, but he's, he's still obviously a, a, an absolute jet and can probably jump and um, feel the, the Melbourne to Sydney planes on his way over the top. Johnston runs off a half back, a serviceable player. Kane Boy has had a really good year this year, boys. Yeah. I think he's he's really stepped up this year. James Marks, you know, gives a bit off a wing. I thought Conker was quiet against us at, uh, over at Marubna the other week. I, you know, I don't know whether he might have been carrying a bit of an injury, but again, another one that I'm sure, you know, Blake Campbell will probably put the acid on and say, mate, VFL standard, we need, we expect more out of you. Um, over to Achuga. Lost to Shep by 72 points, and, and I think Briggsy would be pretty dirty on that. Uh, you know, to that, that to me, is it's a fair thumping. And, you know, I know we speak about all the time, players being in and out of your side, but as a coach, I'd be saying that's unacceptable. Uh, Scotty Beatty, back to his best form, I think was best on. Uh, Phillips, Magna Bosco, Buckley, you know, Simon Buckley, we speak about, you know, this bloke. He can't do it all, boys. And, and yeah. I, uh, you know, I just think these, these players who have got, you know, a one-dimensional player on their side, it's time you get around them and, and get in and back them. Yeah, Florence was good for a Chuka, pitched in and kicked two goals, a big fella. Reed. You know, a good player, we know about it, but I've just got to note he needs to step up and do a bit more across the half-forward line. Um, Pollock out injured at the moment, and obviously he, he uh, puts a hole in their side, and, and Ives has been good. Boys, Marutner, I can tell you now, are a really good running side, and they spread yeah. very, very hard. That's that's the key to their game. Obviously, a Chuka miss Pollock at the moment, but again, I've got to note here, you just can't rely on these players and Buckley to do it all. Interesting, boys, a Chuka, 399.4 at the moment, but the biggest concerning thing for me at the moment is 605 points against. Yes. That is worrying yeah. to me. Yeah, look, Marupna could have uh, Foxy quite easily been, uh, you know, six zip too. There was only ten points to Kai. They lost by and four <laughs> points to Yaroa. So mm. they're going along beautifully, and I think uh, Marupna will win this. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, too. We we'll get Pollock back, and uh, Simon Buckley's going okay. And I tell you, his brother gets a bit of the ball, but sometimes he's guilty of uh, just slaughtering it a little bit. But I'll tell you one thing that the Chuka have got, and that is they have quality big men. Mm. Both Kane Morris. Hey, I'm Kane telling Morris you right now. Play. He is a very good footballer, and uh, I like the way he goes about it. No fear, straight line, and doesn't mind saying good day to a few if they want to say good day to him. Mm. So it's going to be a closer game than what you realise. But what do you mean by that, Foxy? He gets, hey? he gets the old fighting we... gloves up? No, no, no. I don't mean that at all. I'm just saying you. Can if you I play with you fire, you're going to burn your fingers. Go. Did you have garlic today? Yes. I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did as a matter of fact, on and marooned <laughs> for me. Where? Oh, well, I was worried I'm... about. I'm getting bitten by a vampire. Muscle a bit when you're talking. <laughs> Uh, Just, when you talk, we look straight ahead. Okay, there. I will. But don't underestimate the Murray Bombers. They're not oh, yeah. all that bad. And yeah. Marupna, right? Great side, Marupna. Yeah, look, uh, Shepparton versus Seymour. Uh, no, I think this will be a lot closer than what people think. Uh, you know, if you have a look at the uh, Shepparton losses uh, in their five games, it's only an average of 39 mm. points. So they've been up there. And, of course, their last win was they won by 72 points. So they're going to have a lot of confidence out of that. With Seymour, they've been beaten by Benalla by 40, or 18, and Marupna by 44 points. If we look at Seymour... You know, Brent Colburn has been out with him. Saad's got uh, 13 goals for the year. T uh, Tim Bongetti, whether he comes back into the side, he's got 15 for the year. He's a, you know, he's a big uh, import for him, and he's a very, very good player, along with Casey Duncan, Rory Scapel, Harrison Wheeler, Brett Merrithan, uh, Braden Greenfield, Jason uh, Cole. I thought Jason Cole was pretty stiff to miss out in the England Correct. game, boys. Uh, I thought he could have been in there. Paul Scanlon's been good for him through the midfield. Hugh Robertson had a great game at inter-league level. Matty O'Keefe, uh, he was brought in after one game, taking the hat off to Matty O'Keefe for what he did. He did a, a wonderful job. And uh, Braden Grenfell, I just spoke about before, he probably was a bit of a chance. The Shepherd and side, Rhys Sutherland, back to his best uh, a couple of weeks ago, is uh, really Nick Roker. There's a young fellow there by the name of Jared Laffey. He's a really a young fellow, uh, and he's been in their best two times, Fox, and he's been really good. Get away from that garlic, will you? Ash Holland, uh, Nicky Allen, Rupert Sangster, Rowan Hitchcock. Uh, he's got four goals. He's been in their best. He's had a pretty good year, Rowan Hitchcock. Uh, uh, Sangster, as I said. Ted Linton come back in last week, boys, and kicked sixth or last game from him, and he's been good. Daniel Willis with 18, and Seb Walsh. He's been in their best four times. But I'll tell you the interesting thing about Shepparton is they've had 22 goal kickers for the year, so they've had the most goal kick. Yeah, it's a good spread. But, oh, gee, uh, Seymour, 
they got a lot. They, well, if they don't win here, Seymour, they don't deserve to be even pushing for the six. And I think uh, Seymour will get up there, boys. But I reckon uh, Shep will push them. Never easy at Deegan Reserve no. for um, Seymour. Never has been. But I mean, they've got a terrific record there in the big ones and grand finals. But uh, they've got to be at their best to beat Shep because Shep, I saw them last time out. They were more than impressive. Yep. Got some good young kids there. I tell you, I tell you, it's a big powerhouse. A boy called, I think it, I could be wrong here, um, Metzner. Jeez, a yep. big unit. He's he's a only, yeah, that's it. Uh, he's only got a baby face, but when he grow, he's a man mountain now. Yep. He's going to be a big unit in this competition. Just remember that name, and uh, I, I think Shepherd will be going. But I'll, I'll go for Seymour pretty easy in the end. Mm. I had a, boys, I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with Brad Campbell, and he's absolute super bloke, Brad. What what he's doing at Shep, he's got the right values for a coach of a football club. Oh yeah. If I was a Shepherd and uh, committee, I would be saying you have the right bloke at the helm at the moment because what he what he is doing for that club at the moment uh, in their rebuilding phase, he's got the right outlook on footy. He's got the right values to be a coach, and I honestly think a Deacon Shep could have an upset against Seymour this Ooh. week. There's a chance. I'm with Deacon. Hey, I, I, I know somebody that was going to make an outlandish statement in relation to a certain Brett Meredith type hairdo this week that's jibbed it. But we won't go on on that topic, JR. Uh -huh. well, we know, we'll see. Well, the last game we have got here right now, you're on a take on to Chira. Well, you are the side that have really surprised me. They are playing fantastic football. Couldn't see them beating to, uh, to Marupna last week, but they found a way to get over the line. And let me tell you, that way was through a bloke called Gilliland. Gilliland's last quarter was exceptional. Absolutely a gun player at this level. Gilliland, I didn't realise just how good he is. They've got some good players up forward. Brad Gleeson's a big man mountain up forward. JD Hayes, if they keep Hayes in the side, I'll tell you, that, that's the key to him because he's a high possession getter. Patton's kicked a few goals for him up forward. Nick Snowden's a handy player. James Milner, I can remember at the start of the year, James asking you to just sort of play to your ability. And I understand you kicked a goal late in the game last week. Guy that you would have been there mm. that was critical to the final outcome. Huge rap for um, Johnny Cooper, like we've spoken enough about him. They're well led by Andrew Bell. Abraham Ankers with a boy from yep. the Ellis. Terrific kick six, kid. he's playing on the wing, yep. too. He Benny is. Barker, the unheralded Benny Barker, who's now being recognised for all of what they are. They tell me that Jordan Taylor was very, very good last week on the last line of uh, defence. Best, um, best game for the year. Yeah, he played, he played on line. the big yep. fella from... Um, Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, right. Yep. Okay, well, he played on Lewis. Marcus Farley, really underrated player. And, of course, our old mate... Adji. Adji. I mean, it just adds a, adds a bit to him. It'll take They're a big friend to get to back on in the good books of Johnny, but anyway, he, no, he missed the interleague, didn't he? Oh, Adji. If you have you a look. Know he, you know how honest the bloke was? He didn't think he had any open making. Yeah, he's a good bloke. He's a ripper. Oh, he's a great bloke. Best fullback in the league. Oh, Sorry, David. Great bloke. Anyway, I know, buddy, next time, just to wreck your trains of thought completely. If you have a look at Tatura, <laughs> they're undermanned. They're undermanned. They've got Billy Lovell, Gunn, Jamison Daniels. They've got one or two others that are right up there. Paul Kirby has been and will continue to be a great player every time he runs out for the doggies. But they need help. They've got Benny Tatula who's posing a few, few problems for a very limited opportunities. He's a strong, reads the ball very well, Tatula up forward. Henry Penny's a good player. Jack Rennie. Jack Rennie gave, took up playing for Ted after he gave away training boxes. Well, good on you, Jack. And then you've got Daniel Flynn, the Martins, the Ryans and Borellis. But they need a lot. I can't see them. They've got Euroa at... Uh, Memorial Oval. It's a huge ask. I can see Euroa stabilising their position. I think they're in for a big win, John. Yeah, look, I think so too. If, if this Euroa's another side, could have been 6 zip. They've only been beaten by 15 points by Rochi and 6 by Chuka, so they could have been 6 love too. No, I don't think uh, the Bulldogs can uh, get anywhere near Euroa. David, I just want you to quantify uh, one question quantify. for me. There you go. Word. That isn't yeah. as I've heard him yeah. say a couple of yeah. times. When you said at the start of that, you were surprised you a little bit. In what sense? Uh, how, 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 was, how are they surprised? Oh, I didn't think they were going to play finals football. And, and I didn't. And uh, they are. And it's as easy as that. But I will say that th there's one thing that worries me about Uroa as more so than any other side that's up there at the moment, and that is their list. Because if they get substantial injuries, they've got some major gaps from the Akupus of this world. They've got some major gaps from the Terrence and the Gillilands of this world that are playing, and with full respect to everybody that's playing reserve football at Euroa, there is a major step mm. in, in well, most areas. I think, I think I, there's I, a few clubs in that I think area. every club's the same. Oh, yes, no, no, oh, I think, yeah, well, well, I think they, uh, they, I mean, I know that you're a Euroa man. No, but, no, I'm, I'm not I'm asking just, to I be biased. Think, I just want to know how you think that. Yeah, well, well there you go. All right, well, and, and look, 
Really enjoy bringing the boys in today. It's great to talk about and well done for the people on the thing. We're always open for ideas with the show, the format. If you want to see a change incorporated once or twice, then do it. Send it into to More Smile Bag at? More Smile Bag at gmail.com. I will tell you that, uh, and I can say this really proudly, that EFX Media, who are responsible for the live streaming of both the KDFL football and the uh, Golden Valley football against Geelong did an incredible job for those of you that watched it on short. What's his name, the bloke who does it? Um, well, he's been gelded. Had, uh, hasn't been gelded Snippet. yet. He, Dr. Snippet. He runs it. Dr. S- <laughs> Dr. Snipped a bit off here. Anyway, and I'm not talking about his ear. But the figures, look, you can big note and tell it, but you can check it through the Sporting Pulse. We would have had as many as twenty-three to 24,000 people watch the Golden Valley uh, League play football on the weekend. And to my way, I think I'm proud of these blokes. I'm proud of uh, Haig Lindsay for the effort that he puts in. Superstar, EFX media. And our core crew that was backed up with uh, Sev Cortese, Mario Di Santorana, um, Burns, Graham, Graham Burns, Burns, Trevor, Trevor, Byers, Trevor and everyone did a terrific job. It worked out really well, but we couldn't do it without your support. So thanks very much. We'll see you next week.